Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you're watching a brand new interview of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. The holiday seasons are here, and joining me as right. always are my co-hosts from the Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks podcast, Rebellious D and Terrific Trav. How you fellas doing today? Great, man. We got Santa Banks in the house, so I'm, hey, I'm you good. already know, man. Ready when, to rock. <laughs> when the holidays come around, Santa Banks, he is in full gear because you know last year your boy showed up at both of y'all's houses and dropped off gifts to the kids. And, you know, Santa Banks, he just loves to, you know, spread love and joy, man, especially during the holiday season. You know, I mean, when the Grinch is coming down that chimney, Santa Banks <laughs> is there to knock him out. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> and, uh, oh. Joining us on today's episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, he is a talented comic book artist. He's done so much work with everything, DC, Image, you name it. And that mm -hmm. is Mr. Jeremy Hahn. How are you doing today, Jeremy? Hey, great to see you guys. Thanks. Hey, you're Thanks welcome. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for coming on and joining us. And uh, before we get into today's interview, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to the channel, and you hit that bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And D, like you tell everybody every time on every video. <laughs> Podcast in the description. Like, follow, subscribe to the channel, and thank you for watching. Awesome. That's all you gotta so, do. Uh -huh. That's it. So yeah, well, let's go ahead and get into it. Before we get into it, though, I do want to comment that Trav, you know, he has on the Star Wars holiday shirt. So, mm -hmm. you know, Trav, I see you're being festive. You know, I mean, like, you're not always a Grinch. Nah, the Grinch is an incredible movie, though. Which one, though? Yeah, are you no talking? Yeah, you got to remember that you got the cartoon, mm -hmm. you got the Jim well, Carrey. Well, both of them. Both of them. I'm talking about that Jim oh, Carrey. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Jim well, Carrey killed that role. Well, what about the new one that came out? What, uh, that was that was pretty good, too. I still haven't that seen That wasn't bad. I'm hating. We not hating. It's good. on the list. It's, it's on, on the, the list. list. <laughs> it's on the list. But anyway, Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us, man. Every guest that we have here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, we always ask, what is your origin story? Every hero or villain has one. So tell everybody who Jeremy Hahn is. Man, I wish I had a better origin story. I got to work on that. I got I to make up something really elaborate so that it, you know, it sounds, you know, falling into a vat of, you know, ink or something like that. But, okay. <laughs> hey, well, I mean, look. You know, you say you need to create one. You know, everybody's listening. Everybody's watching. Yeah, starting so today. Go ahead. Yeah, this is the start <laughs> of your origin story. Like, let everybody, like, just tell everybody who you are. Like, how you were yeah. created. How you were <laughs> born. Did you land here on Earth? <laughs> well, my, my, my dad met my mom, and he thought she looked pretty cute. That's and, right. Uh, oh, look, not, that, not, not that far back. Okay. So, uh, you know, as, as a kid, um, uh, I grew up with a single mom. She worked in a, a little... Uh, a little dime store, a little convenience store kind of thing. Uh, there was a spinner rack there. Uh, I was sick a lot as a kid, and the guy that ran the shop would let her take home the comics. You know, back in the day on a spinner rack, you could tear off the covers and send those back in, and you were supposed to throw away the comics. And Charlie was a great guy and, and knew that, you know, this little, little puny kid at home. Uh, so he would always send those comics home with my mom. And it was me reading everything from Archie to, you know, EC horror comics to uh, to Marvel and DC stuff. And I just got this really broad breadth of love for the comics medium. And I would sit there, you know, even, and she, she still tells these stories occasionally, but like, uh, I had this little table in my room and I would sit there and she would bring these comics home. And I would, I would redraw the panels, you know, nice. I'd sit there in crayons and all, whatever I had. Mm. And uh, that was just what I, you know, what I did. And I kind of never, ever grew out of that. I think in, in um, junior high and into high school, you know, I, I both, while, while I drew a lot, I both wrote and, and would draw, you know, constantly. And I was always, you know, taking either stories that existed and kind of doing my own, my own take on those or, uh, you know, writing my own stuff and, uh, you know, I remember in, you know back as far as um, junior high, stepping in and, and like creating. You know, it wasn't ever more than like part of a first issue kind of thing. But I was mm -hmm. constantly making up my own superhero teams and various things, and and uh, that stuck. You know, eventually I, um, you know, I, I got into uh, after high after high school. I got into college, which is a small local college. I took every art class I could take just to kind of broaden my experience. 
And uh, then eventually I just left to, uh, I was, I was like, you know, I, I had a, I had a pretty crappy experience with, with, with a professor that I, in, in college that was kind of like, oh, you need to, you need to stop doing this comics thing. This is, you know, this is, this is silly. This is ridiculous. And I, and I wasn't gonna, mm-hmm. and he was like, well, you know, you, you, you need to do it. So in order to prove him wrong, I completely left the program and ended up drawing comics professionally. And, and uh, you know, that pretty much brings me there now. That's right. And, yeah. Hey, that's an awesome origin story. You said yeah, that is. you didn't have a man. It's like pinkies yeah, up to pretty, you. Yeah, <laughs> like, that was a really good story. Yeah, man. Because, I mean, we hear all the time, like, because mm. uh, when we had Harvey Tallabaugh up here and he was telling us when he was younger and he wanted to get into comics, how, you know, he grew up, his grandma collected comics and whatnot. And, you know, he had something similar happen to him where he was told, like, hey, you shouldn't do this. You need to focus on something else. But when it's something that you love doing, it doesn't matter what negativity that somebody says to you to try to deter you from what you really want to do. If you really want to do it, you're going to do it. You know, I mean, Mm -hmm. I used to have people tell me all the time I was never going to be a professional wrestler and, you know, I should focus on doing something else. And I was just like, hey, this is something I want to do. So it's it's my life. And, you know, Drake said you only YOLO, you only live once. So hey, and now now you're Santa Claus. So yeah, now I'm Santa Banks. You know what I'm saying? And I'm (laughs) how far you've come. Look how far I've come, man. And you know I'm gonna be wrestling this month at Santa Banks, and uh it's always a good time. I always <laughs> throw candy canes out into the crowd and whatnot, and all the kids love it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh Jeremy, one thing that I wanted to piggyback off of something that you had said when you were a kid and your mom she would bring you the comics and whatnot. I think it's cool that you saw these comics and you collected them, you read them, and then you just kept on drawing, like you were inspired to draw. I know when I was a kid, it's like I would read comics and it's like it's like I had that that itch to draw. But then it's like I would look at my drawings and I was just mm-hmm. like, uh, it's not that good. So I just stopped. But I feel like when it comes to, you know, honing your craft, it's something that you got to keep doing over and over and over again until you get to the point. Because like looking at your work, like it's amazing. And then you had the opportunity to do stuff with DC, Image Comics, like Batman, like, you know, Batman, he's one of like the greatest comic book heroes of all time besides spider-man you know what i'm saying so like how is it being able to you know work with dc and all of these other companies and you know just doing work for them i mean i've been very very fortunate in my career i think that that's that's the thing it's like um you know you'll 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 get young kids and uh i have a 16 year old son right now he's he's in the uh the the comics club at the at the high school you know so he talked to a lot of his friends and we end up talking about you know oh i'm talking with with those kids or whatever about like um kind of perseverance when it comes to being creative i, I think that you know whether you know, I mean, in writing drawing you know, talking about wrestling even like you think about like no matter what you're doing you hone your craft right the things that you do at this point are completely different than the things that you were doing a year ago or two years ago or five years ago. And we just work to get better and better and better. And I, I was telling a story to my son about, um, there was this buddy of mine in junior high and we were drawing GI Joe constantly. We were kind of obsessed with GI Joe at the time. And, and, uh, I, I'm, I'm old enough that like, uh, you know, the, the original show was on, you know, whenever I was a yeah. kid. Yeah. And uh, I remember G.I. Joe, the movie had just come out and we were, you know, we were drawing the figures from that. And my buddy was such a better artist than I was at that point. You know, he was, he was, it it was just so natural, you know, and he was doing amazing stuff. And I was kind of like trying to keep up with him. And I remember how how I kind of always like felt like, ah, you know, I'm not as good as he is. I'm not as good as he is. Why can't I, I do better? And at some point he stopped drawing and I stuck with it. Mm. And, and I think that there's something to be said for that long-term perseverance. I think that when, when you sit down and you say, okay, like I'm going to practice a little bit every day. It doesn't matter what that is. I mean, you know, I, like, you know, I think about like instruments that I gave up on, you know, I was like, Oh, I want to play the guitar. And I'm like, 
this is makes my fingers hurt, man. This this is uh-huh. this is really tough, you know, or or what whatever it was, or like drums. I was like, I don't, I, I can't quite hold this off, you know. I don't have the rhythm, but it's you know, you don't you, you muscle memory, whether it's you know, no matter what you're doing, is a really important thing. And I think that drawing is one of those most important things. You know, it's like you can you know get those hand skills up and, and keep going. That same friend, you know. Later, and I, we were we were adults, and I had comics coming out. And he was like, "Man, he's like, I, he's like, I always wanted to keep keep up with drawing, but I never did." And 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 I just I was thinking about it, and like he brought that up, and I was like, I was so intimidated by him when we were mm-hmm. kids, and now I work professionally mm-hmm. doing that, and you know he does other stuff, and you know I, he, he has a fantastic life, and you know and, and, and we're all happy with where we are, but. I am where I am because of that perseverance. And I think yeah. that's a really important thing. Yeah, man. Absolutely. And to piggyback yeah. off of that, like I 100%, you know, agree with you. And it's it's kind of funny, like how similar, like our origin stories are. Like uh, with wrestling, um, they had put me with another guy at the time. We were the only two African-American guys at the school. So they just put both of us together. And like mm-hmm. this dude, like he was insanely athletic. He was funny. Like we were both charismatic, but the way I looked at him was the way that you looked at your friend. It's just like, yo, this dude, like he's way better than me. And then eventually he had to stop wrestling because he had a family and whatnot. But, um, you know, he told me he was just like, I always thought that you were better than me. And especially seeing where I am now in my wrestling career, you know, it's, it's just crazy when you hear that from somebody that you thought was so much more talented and so much better than you. And for them to tell you like, man, it's just like, you were the better person. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at all the amazing work that you've done. So again, Pinky's up to you for that. Now, I know D, he's an artist. You know what I'm saying? It's just like me and him, we grew up together. And D, he's a huge comic book nerd as well. And, you know, I've always been a fan of, I've, I've always been a fan of D's artwork. You know what I'm saying? And it's just one of those things. So D, I'll pass the ball to you and I'll let you ask the next question. Yeah, Jeremy, not so much a, a question for you, but um, first I want to start with a statement and it's just um, perseverance and ra- you got to raise your game sometimes, no matter what you're doing and muscle memory, whether it's sports, art, you know, music. And it's a huge point that you made. It's just being able to dedicate yourself to whatever it is you want to do, whether it's five minutes, an hour, a day, you know, it goes a long way. I used to just sit. Uh, I was raised by my grandmother and I used to just sit in my room. Just all I had was a stereo. I had no TV in my room and I would just collect CDs and just draw, you know, and it was just peaceful. It was my getaway and it, it helped me a lot to become good. I I mean, I totally agree with what you're saying, but I do want to um, before we get into the nitty gritty, I got to ask favorite superhero. Simple question. Um, Favorite superhero. I mean, you know, I, I really think that that mm-hmm. you know, like Benjamin hit it on the head earlier. It's like, yeah, Batman kind of kind of was always the one that stood out for me. You know, I, I Bruce. Yeah, I, I <laughs> you know, I have I I was never just devoted to like mm-hmm. one like Marvel or DC growing yeah. up. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, I love you know, like like I always loved you know, uh, like Batman and. Then I would love, you know, Daredevil, and then yeah. you know, it's like, you know, every, you know, and I'm the 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 era that I was reading comic books was, you know, really big for, you know, like Chris Claremont and you know, you had, you had Sylvester and Jim Lee and a lot of people doing doing, you know, stuff on the X Men, and those were those were really huge for me. But you know, Batman is the one that I always go back to. I, I love the I love Gotham. I love the villains. You know, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. That's definitely something we talk about up here is how well-rounded Batman's villains are. He has some the best catalog of villains, basically. Oh, yeah. Out of any anybody. So absolutely. Yeah, definitely the uh best rogues gallery. I, I think the only other person again, like I mean, Spider Man. Spider Man. You yeah. know, Spider Man right. has yep. a really good rogues <clears throat> gallery as well. Uh when you think of like the the bigger names, like the Sinister Six and stuff like that. You know, of course, he has his wacky villains, just like Batman has his wacky right. villains. But yeah, it's it's awesome to see like guys like Polka Dot Man mm-hmm. become mm-hmm. a household name in the Suicide wow. Squad movie. Because when I was younger, I was just like Polka Dot Man, or yeah. uh, who who was the guy in um, mm-hmm. Harley Quinn? It was it uh, Kite Man. Yep, that was with Poison Ivy. So mm-hmm. I mean, I, I just love how DC is taking 
you know, like these villains who were weren't well known and were laughable and like making them like, oh man, this guy, he's actually pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Now, oh, go ahead, D. No, I was going to ask Trav, did you have anything to add before? Yeah. I, I mean, I know you're big on DC. That's why I want to yeah, see my it, mans. But just going back to Batman, I like, as far as my love for comics, my love of comics really comes from non superhero stuff. I don't really read a lot of superhero stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I read a lot of DC, but outside of Batman, I really, I read a lot of IDW stuff mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. because they don't have a whole lot of superheroes. Like, right. it's just comic comics and that's what i always loved about your work jeremy is when i look at the catalog and things that you're doing like with the realm and the beauty and all these things that's why i really gravitated towards like the walking dead and Mm -hmm. stuff like that because it's like you still get that feel for comics but it's not superheroes Mm -hmm. and it's not that i'm crapping on superheroes or anything it's like that Mm -hmm. but i like batman because he wasn't a superhero like in a way and that's what I just really love about your work too. Is like you've done a lot of superhero stuff, but I feel like the majority of your artwork is either your own creation or other stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I and I think I think as a follow up to what you were saying about you know kind of like enjoying both or enjoying you know mm-hmm. whatever. It's like um, I I think we all to a degree grew up on superhero comics. But then, like, for me, finding, you know, uh, a lot of the crazy black and white stuff that was coming out, you know, right. but, um, I think um, Grendel was a huge, mm-hmm. was a huge thing for me. Um, uh, when Vertigo hit, right. you know, having stuff like uh, Hellblazer and Sandman, all those yeah. things, those were <clears throat> pretty, you know, like, pretty huge for what I was doing. And those inspired me in a lot of ways. Right. And you know now I, I I still have a lot of love of um, of superhero comics, but I think that more of what I read is other stuff now. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I will agree. Um, and one thing too, we talk about sometimes <coughs> is how far along like uh japanese anime has come now like where you actually get exposure to different genres i feel like comic books in a way because of the development of social media and stuff it's the Mm -hmm. same way that stuff gets way more exposure so yeah yeah i think that's why a lot of people gravitated towards swamp man when they Mm -hmm. came out you know in the 80s and because again it's not superhero stuff like but oh, it started making that tie-in you know yeah. with justice league dark and all that stuff but he's not a superhero it's a story about a man that has some sort of accident type mm-hmm. of thing you know what i mean and even going to batman's villains it's all it's all something happens to this person yeah. and that's what makes them the way they are you know and that's why x-men was so good it's because there was like a a gene that transformed these people and gave them these weird powers. Absolutely. Yeah, I wanted to agree with you on that. Now, Jeremy, I wanted to, you know, take it back to 2002 when, you know, you first started working with two Irish guys press. Like, how was it, you know, getting your foot into the door and, you know, starting your comic book journey career? I mean, when it comes to creativity, I think that some people tend to want to wait for permission to make things. Mm-hmm. Right. And I understand. I understand the fear. I understand it's a, it's a lot of work. It takes, you know, it, it, it takes hours, days, years to, to make these things. But realistically, the more that I just did things, the more I made my own things and hoped that there was a readership out there for it, the better I did. And, um, you know, I, I worked with a guy that I knew locally on, on, uh, when we first started and I was just like, Hey, you know, I I don't quite have the confidence to write necessarily, you know, but I draw, let's work together on a thing. And so we would make, you know, we make comics and, um, image saw that comic paradigm, that first one and was like, Hey, you know, why didn't you talk to us about this? And I was like, cause I didn't, you know, I didn't know you'd like it. Yeah. And um, I inter- you know, we ended up doing 12 issues of that book at Image. And 
that led to the next thing and led to the next thing and led to the next thing. And I think that um, I, I always joke that I was maybe too dumb to not, you know, just to, to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. No, no, that's awesome. And I mean, like, you know, image, they saw your work and whatnot, and it's just like, they brought you in, you know? Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you this question now, you know, you did work with image, you did work with DC, you did work with Marvel. I know we talked about Batman being your favorite hero, but um, I want to ask you, what was one of your favorite projects working with, with Marvel? Because I know we've been talking DC heavy a lot, but talking with, about Marvel, what was one of your favorite projects doing? I mean, I didn't do a ton of stuff at, at Marvel. Um, I mean, I got to do really cool stuff at Marvel, but like, sure. like I didn't do a ton. Um, so, I mean, realistically, The first thing I did, which was Captain America, Iron Man, the Civil War project, um, yeah. you know, they, I, 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 would, I came out and was given a huge book right out the gate. You know, it was that, it was a one shot. It was, I think, 48 pages. It, it was really big and, and really epic. It was telling the lion's share of, of the history between Captain America and Iron Man, their friendship why you know what was important about it the journey along the way i got to draw these massively iconic moments from you know marvel history uh everything from you know uh from the you know the Kree scroll war stuff to going in and and drawing you know at the moment when when stacy died right and you know i got to i got to show you know i got to do all that stuff and it, it was intimidating as hell and um now that I think about it, I'm like, oh, I really wasn't quite ready for this. You know, I hoped I was, I thought I was, but you know, it it's uh, it was a big step. But I but I I loved it, and you know, that led to everything else that I've done since then. Yeah, yeah. So it was just after that. It's like kind of like how we say up here, it just snowballs. Snowballs. Yeah, you know what Damn I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah. No. Like that's it's always awesome, man. And you know. Like I had mentioned earlier about, you know, giving you the pinkies up to, you know, being able to work with these incredible companies. I mean, you know, growing up and reading these comics and then just being a part of, you know, these teams and doing stuff with them. Like, it's always an amazing thing to do. Now, to kind of take it back to D.C., you had worked on uh, the Superwoman and Batwoman comic back in 2008. Now, right. like, how was it doing that, man? I mean... You know, I, I mentioned Marvel DC. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. That was actually the first thing that I ended up doing for DC. They, I had been working for, um, I'd been working for Marvel, and, and uh, they just asked me to come over and do like a quick little fill-in. And I was like, "All right, I'm going to come do this. I'm going to rock it. I'm going to really try to do everything on it." And that was a crazy story. It was kind of like a it wasn't Elseworlds, but it was you know, uh, a multiverse story. There we go. Yeah, it was, it was right. a big, you know, so it was like, like all these different variations of these characters. And I just dove in and had a lot of fun with it. And that ended up leading to, I mean, I worked with DC for nearly three years and then went away and worked for Top Cow for a while. For a couple of years and then i came back and worked with dc for a couple more years and you know it i mean my, my relationship with dc was one of the longest of my career and it was you know just a wonderful experience they 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 i think sometimes in comics you have what they think you are at dc they really saw what i could do and where to put me and we're very supportive of that. I, I definitely appreciated it. So that wasn't like a freelance thing for you where they just have you come in for X amount of issues. Is that like a, you're hired on as a full-time artist and they're kind of giving you jobs? I mean, it, that that was freelance. Like like all of my work at, at, at DC was technically freelance. But, right. but, just, but you come on and they say, okay, we've got the six issue mini series that we want to do or whatever it is. And 
you're there for six, you know, six, eight months, you're there for a year, whatever that is, you know, and, and that's just as it goes. I mean, uh, my, my only real exclusive was with Top Cow and that was for, right. that was for a solid two years. I did that. That was a great experience. And, and, you know, I really, I really love that chance, you know, and, and that belief that they put in there. Like, okay. Well, you're guaranteed this much work. It's going to happen over this kind of time. A lot of fun. Right. So a follow up question for that. So basically the process of getting in the door for some, anybody who wanted to pursue a career like that, you know, doing artwork or working on comics in general, um, is it basically, you know, your typical build your artist portfolio and, you know, and you just audition? How does that work? I mean, to be perfectly honest, it's changed so much. Okay. You know, since I, since I've been in comics, um, you know, I, I think Instagram has been a fantastic tool hmm. for, for artists, you know, I know oh, people, yeah, for sure. you know, that literally like cover artists that, that started getting gig just because of their Instagram portfolio. Mm. Um, I've, I've hired people for stuff that I've written because of Instagram. I think that's one of the best tools, which yeah, it's still a portfolio. It's still, it's an online yeah. portfolio. When I was coming in, it was much more, you had to kind of build a portfolio, then show mm -hmm. it to people. Like a tradition. A lot of, yeah. Well, it was a lot of even like going to conventions and meeting editors there. Right. That sort uh -huh. of thing. Uh -huh. um, very different now. But I think that, you know, it's, it's you know, I, I always encourage people that like so much of this is literally make the thing, show people what you can do, and then the work will come. And I think right. that some people... You know, uh, I, I think a lot of a lot of people see creators come up, and it seems like they come up fast. You know, they don't realize that like that person's been trying to get in for a decade, whatever right. it is. You know, and and you know, there's there's no there's no shame in drawing at nights on the weekends doing what you can when you can and you, you got to get there and, and and you know so many of these things are skill based right like yeah like you can have you know uh there 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 have been situations in my career where some kid came in you know you'll have a a 19 year old a uh, girl from, you know, uh, from like rural Mississippi that will get a gig drawing covers and they'll be the hottest stuff out there right now. Right. And I'm like, oh, I've been here forever. And and, yeah. and you're like, holy crap, that person made something truly special. And it's, and I think that's one of the joys about this industry is like, regardless of who you are, where you come from, whatever it is, if you're talented, we want you in this industry because it's, right. you know, we want more comments. Yeah. You know, to piggyback off of something that wow. you had mentioned about the cons, one of my favorite things is, you know, we interview cosplayers at these cons, but we also interview comic book artists as well. And mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, like you said, with Instagram being a tool so that way people can get more exposure, like the convention scene for, you know, people who have been doing this for years and like, you know, just thriving from going to these conventions, showing off their works and whatnot. I just think that it's an awesome thing. And it's an awesome, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, form of exposure. You know what I'm saying? Because like when it comes to the con scene, like there's always new people coming to these things being introduced, like you know, I interview cosplayers for a YouTube series called Who's That Cosplayer? And like one of the things that every cosplayer always says is that they never knew what a con was. And when they go there, they just take it all in. You know, it's a huge experience. So, you know, you could see somebody there and like they might be a talented artist and like they see the comic book artists that are there. And then it's just like, hey, you know, you inspire me to do something with my art and get into, you know, actually you know, putting my foot in the door when it comes to creating comics. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, and I've been doing this for 20 years now. So like I've had so many experiences meeting somebody that 
you know, they'll come to your table and they'll show you their portfolio when they're, you know, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, five, seven, 10 years later, they're working in comics. You know, they are my peers. And that's, that's a really a beautiful thing. You know, that's, uh, being, being a good steward, being somebody that, that can encourage people, even with what, you know, with, with what you're doing, like you're, you're encouraging people. You're saying, this may be your first convention. This may be your first outing. It's maybe the first time you ever, you know, did cosplay or, or whatever that is. And the more that we can encourage people and make people feel like, hey, this is a, this is a community built on love of creativity, yep. Yep. Uh, the better off we all are. Hell yeah. Yeah, I really love what you just said because, I mean, when it comes to cosplay, when it comes to comics, when that person goes into that convention, especially like when they're kids and like they see this stuff, I mean, like mm -hmm. even going back to wrestling, like you see it on TV for the first time or you go to your first wrestling show. It's just like, yo, mm -hmm. like this is something that I really want to do. So it's just like you never know who you're going to inspire by them seeing your work. You know what I'm saying? And That's I mean, cool. going all the way back to when you were a kid, you know, you would read these comic books and then you're just like, hey, I want to actually start drawing. And like now, like look at all of the incredible things that you've done. So I wanted to move it along and talk about beauty. I know Trav had mentioned it earlier where it's like with Image Comics, a lot of their comics, they <coughs> don't really focus on superheroes. They focus really on stories. And, you know, I love with beauty how uh, story is. It's just, you know, you could be beautiful forever, but it's it comes at a cost. So uh, before we get into realm, I want to talk a little bit about beauty. Like, what was the inspiration behind that and wanting to create this creation? I've been, um, I've been working for Top Cow uh, for well over a year, and um, at, at the time, my editor there, Philip Sablick, who ended up, uh, you know, he was the uh, he, he did a lot of work there and and then um ended up going and, and going to boom studios right. and uh philip and i talked a lot about you know just like making comic books and about sort of not just where we were as creatives in the moment but like where we really wanted to be in five ten years and he kind of hit on this thing where he was like you know, I, I feel like you are more of just a storyteller than an artist. You know, you're not limited to being just an artist. I think that sometimes, sometimes creatively, we get pigeonholed in just being one thing. Right. And, and we have the power to choose which path we're going to take. You know, like, you don't have to just do it this way. You can do it this way, too. And I... I I knew that I wanted to write and I, I had, you know, I had this laundry list of ideas. You know, I was telling Philip specifically, I was like, oh, you know, I've got this idea and this idea and this idea. And he was like, I think you need to be writing as much, if not more than drawing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's intimidating. You know, what if mm -hmm. I screw it up? And he's like, like anybody that is out there, like any, like, like, let's demystify this for just a second. There isn't some, there isn't like some appointment. You don't get, you know, an, uh, an owl with a letter in its mouth that says you are a writer. That's not how right. that works. You, you make a choice at a point to tell stories. You do this or you do this or you do it this way or whatever it is. But, you know, why wait on someone to give you permission to do those things? Right. And so uh, I was really, I had this idea. I wanted to do something that dealt with, um, the perceptions of how we see ourselves and what society says about us, the way that we look at beauty, you know, like if you're like this, you're attractive. If you're like this, you're not, you know, and it's, it's so limiting. And, and, but you know, like what if everybody could do that? Right. And, um, I came up with the idea. Um, I mentioned it to, to Philip at Top Cow and he was like, he was like, okay, that's really good. Like, please, you know, but let, let's let's talk more about this. I ended up doing it as a pilot season uh, project at Top Cow. We won pilot season with it, um, which I mean, it was it was really nice because we were at San Diego Comic Con. 
we were all pitching our pilot season books. Everybody's telling their ideas. People in comics are really good about pitching their ideas. They, they, you know, and I was like, oh man, like everybody ahead of me was so good. <laughs> and uh, then, I, and then I, they're like, so what's the beauty about? I'm like, leaning into the microphone. I'm like, it's about an STD that makes you beautiful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then everybody like just the, the it, like I watched it wash over the crowd, you know, and they got it. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. I think I really have something here. And, uh, you know, uh, I worked with my buddy Jace Curley on it. We ended up writing 30 issues in the series and really just got to tell the story our way. It's kind of perfect. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, something that I would be interested in checking out because, like yeah. you said, you know, just being able to stay beautiful forever and, like, the way how society sees beauty and whatnot. Um, I'm trying to remember what movie it was. I think it was Escape from L.A., where, you know, it was kind of set like in that post-apocalyptic setting and how you had the people who tried to stay beautiful forever by, you know, using plastic surgery and whatnot, mm -hmm. but they were really Very monsters. Weird, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like I could see this with beauty where it's just like, you're going to do whatever it takes so that way that you can stay beautiful, even if, you know, you really don't look beautiful anymore. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and I like how I kind of just brought up like post-apocalyptic because, you know, going to Realm, your other series that you created, like I love how, you know, you had these monsters, dragons, orcs, you know, just come from out of nowhere. And it's just like they pretty much destroyed human civilization and now it's set in this post-apocalyptic world where it's just like hey we got to do what we have to survive so like what was your inspiration for coming up with that um i think it was just me thinking about what kind of stories i love you know that i've always loved um a lot of times, you know, when you're thinking about those things, you think about the nostalgia of something, right? It was about um, me and my buddy Chris in his basement playing Dungeons and Dragons and watching Road Warrior over and over again. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that for me was was kind of like pure magic as a kid. And I was like, oh, I want to bottle that. I want I want to tell those stories. I want to tell stories about people. You know, like. <clears throat> You know, Mad Max meets Dungeons and Dragons is kind of perfect, you know, and, and it's yep. like everything I want in one place. And so, you know, we, we definitely had a lot of fun with that. And uh, I'm happy with what, you know, what we, you know, what we produced. I mean, it looks amazing. So yeah. I'll be checking <clears throat> it out for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, go ahead, yeah. No, I was just going to say, man, you know, and not, you know, just because you're here and not blowing smoke up your ass or anything, but yeah, I'm checking that. I, <laughs> I really analogy. just, I really just feel like right now when what I'm currently into and reading, I feel like my top guys are you and Ben Bishop. And I don't even know if you know who Ben Bishop is, but right now he's uh, known for working on the tmnt last ronin series oh, with kevin yeah. Eastman. so but y'all are just amazing storytellers on top of artists and i pretty much just love everything that you do on like not independently because you do stuff with image too like with beauty and realm and red mother and stuff but i just love all your stories dude uh, i love the how every drawing style was different and then i was telling the guys about how you did like the 31 days of halloween art sets and that style is completely different than what you see when like we're reading your comic books and stuff and i just love the versatility of not like you talked about being pigeonholed mm -hmm. not just pigeonholed to being an artist but the style of artist that you are i just want to have fun with this i mean that's that's the most important thing right yeah, no matter for what sure. you're doing, uh, you know, I think that I think that the last couple of years, have, if they haven't, if they taught us nothing else, it's that we need to enjoy what we're doing. You know, we only get to do this for so long. We only get to, as far as I know, this is it. You know, and and, and I I really, you know, uh, 
I just want to have fun making things and telling stories. I have the opportunity to, you know, I, I, get, I get paid money to have, you know, these ideas, you know, that, that form in my head. I get to put them on paper. And that's, uh, that's pure magic. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love how with Red Mother, you know, how you incorporate horror into it and how, you know, she sees like another world that other people can't see. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like when I, you know, read descriptions and stuff, you know, I always use my own imagination. I'm just like, oh, well, you know, this kind of, you know, sounds similar to They Live, you know, mm -hmm. where it's just like, you know, you had the glasses on and then you saw that there were aliens on right. Earth. Okay. Like, was that sort of an inspiration to Red Mother? Because I know you said with Realm, you know, Mad Max meets Dungeons and Dragons was kind of your inspiration for that. But was that kind of an inspiration for Red Mother? Um, I love They Live. I love all the Carpenter stuff. But uh, right. not not really so much in that instance. But But I think that um, you know, they they live is definitely a uh, a milestone, you know, for 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 cool sci fi horror. Um, for me, it was mostly wanting to tell stories about um, the things that actually truly scare me, and I and the the idea of um, seeing other things that people that other people don't. Seeing, seeing this thing that's coming for you and, and is, is relentless. And that, that's terrifying. Uh, I find, you know, um, I watch, you know, I, I've watched so much horror my entire life uh, as a kid, as an adult. Um, nothing really scares me very much mm -hmm. anymore. You know, it's like I'll watch whatever and I don't you know. I, I, I'm always seeking the feeling that I had whenever I was terrified as a kid of stuff. So for me, a lot of it really comes down to like tricking my brain, using the things that scare me and telling those as stories. Like, then I'm making a scary story. And, and you know, uh, the, the Red Mother was very much me sort of unpacking all the things that I find creepy and, and kind of wanting to tell that as a story yeah right yeah, yeah. No, and yeah you're good I, at it yeah man i mean i feel like uh you know the best experiences that you experience in life you know they make for the best stories i mean i know like stephen king for example um you know most of his stories come from you know things that he's experienced in life and i know when i was a kid i was just like so like he really experienced like a clown that was chasing <laughs> people you know what i'm saying and took it literal yeah i mean well that's how i was like you know pet cemetery and all that stuff i was just like yo like is there really a like i used to have nightmares Burns really do shape us creatively what was that i think the things that 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 shape us as children like the things that scare us as children really do shape us creatively mm -hmm. absolutely you know, I, I think that they really build us you know into uh, you know i think that you know like mentioning stephen king or or uh, clive barker or a lot of these these mm -hmm. authors that like yeah. mm -hmm. you you can tell that they <clears throat> they internalized a lot of things small town yeah. living uh you know uh the, the fear of clowns or uh, uh you know yeah and yeah and then the traumas that build us and i think that yep. and i think that as we go um you know we want to tell those stories over and over again you know yep. they're important to us yeah definitely think, i'm sorry try but i was just gonna say oh, yeah. definitely like seeing those movies when you're a kid it's just mm -hmm. like you know I, I was afraid of cemeteries because i thought that you know, the pets <laughs> was gonna come back to life you know i, I was never afraid of clowns but you know, I know a lot of people who are afraid of clowns and, you know, it being one of them because they were just traumatized by seeing that. I mean, I know people that's afraid of Candyman, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like they saw that movie when they were a kid and, yeah, yeah. It, you know, people, they still don't say his name five times in the mirror. So yeah, I think I think everybody kind of like in our age bracket went through the whole Bloody Mary mirror. I never did stuff. <laughs> so, but yeah, OK, um. I, I just got one more question to ask you, Jeremy, and then I'll pass it off sure. to uh, these other guys. So I do just want to bring up 
real quick, you know, your Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, for Hauntology, it's a hundred and forty-four page oversized hardcover comic collection of black and white, you know, essential comics that you've written. Um, you know, I'll be picking up a copy myself on the Kickstarter. I know it's coming to an end. You know, you got a kind of a release date. You're shooting for like February, mm -hmm. but if you just kind of want to plug now plug it away but just kind of give a rundown of what exactly it is just because from and i'll link the kickstarter but when you look at this it is just insanely legit how it's all done the hardcover book the drawings the, i mean it's incredible it's incredible thank you i i i mean it was truly a labor of love this is the this is you know if we have to say that anything um positive came right. out of the the <laughs> pandemic you know the right. past couple of years it really for me was you know uh we went pencils down the comics industry everything got put on hold for so long and right. we had to um you know we we had to figure out ways around that we had to figure out how to to you know uh stay i don't know creative during that right. time yeah. And and for me, it was, I decided you know I'm going to tell short stories. I'm going to put them out there, and and I started doing that, and pe and they just clicked with people. And, and part of it was I was telling stories that had to do with the feelings and emotions that we all had during the pandemic. Right. And um, I didn't know. I didn't exactly know that it was going to be a book. And then I suddenly was in, you know, I was, you know, 50 pages in and I'm like, hold, you know, like, like, wait a minute. I think this is, this is more than just a series of short stories that I'm releasing over, you know, over Patreon or something like that. This is something that's going to be big. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I put that together. Um, it is, you know, uh, it's available now. Like you can go uh, to, uh, to, you can go to the, the Kickstarter page It'll take you to backer kit. It's now in pre-order phase through backer kit. But yeah, it's gonna be out in February. It's you know a beautiful hardcover. I'm working with a great designer on it. We're very, very excited about it. Yeah, yeah, it looks incredible, yeah. like I said. So well, it might be something that's uh right for me. I am a huge horror person. Now, nah, um, dude, you're gonna love this thing. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. I got a sneak peek at it. I took a look. <laughs> um, I do. I want more in depth. You know, it might be something to add to a collection, you know, like it's all about what you draw inspiration from for your piece, Absolutely. you know, and that's as simple as it is. But Jeremy, uh, you know, growing up, we all had that thing. You mentioned it. What were some things or what was your what stuck with you as a kid that really spooked you? What was that one thing for you or two things? Um, I think things standing very, very still in the dark scare the hell out of me right yeah, that's a good one it's very eerie because your yeah. brain works like that really yeah. if you look at it and the shape throws you yeah yeah that's and, a great... and, yeah and and big and like things smiling right at, you know like like that for some reason you know like not 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 a like, like you, ronald like you, you guys get good smiles no they, but like creepy smiles you know those <laughs> yeah, yeah, like michael like yeah, like, yeah, like michael i like you know, that standing like shock still and and <laughs> smiling at you and you're like oh you're gonna eat me are you you yeah. know mm -hmm. yeah and i think I for it. me that that was that thing absolutely yeah. Yeah. and then that's um, the best part about bill's scar guards pennywise mm -hmm. was that that insane very smile. creepy yeah. very creepy yeah. it oh, worked yeah. well um and then my uh my second question my wrap up is uh favorite 80s or 90s movie growing up uh, 80s uh, or 90s <clears throat> uh Halloween three, nice. Halloween Se season of the witch. Season yeah. of the witch. Hmm, that's an interesting pick. Yeah, because it, it's a hater or love it movie. You know, it, exactly, just, exactly. Yeah. Yep. I yes. know. Hey, right, great answer. Thanks. Yeah. A final question for you, Jeremy, because we can't end this because it's the holiday season. So I got to ask you this question: uh, What is one of your favorite holiday traditions around the uh, Christmas season? Um. I just love cooking and you know getting around making drinks and hanging out with my family that's mm -hmm. that's that's the that's the best thing for me you know and and we all get together and cook all day and uh not really holiday food you know usually we do some weird theme yeah but you know that's that's my favorite man hey, awesome. you an eggnog fan 
Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I've made my share of eggnog. Yeah. Nice. Here we nice. go. Good deal. So, Jeremy, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us up here mm -hmm. on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. You are a great guest. And before we let you go, let everybody on social media land know where they can find you at. You can follow, find me all over social media. It's just under Jer Han, J E R H A U N. Look me up. I'll be around. Thanks so much, fellas. Yeah, you're welcome. Absolutely. Brad, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. That's right. I'm on the Instagram at ZK Audio, on Letterboxd, and the Twitter at T R A V I O S C K D. You can find me at rebellious double underscore d23 at instagram.com banks then you know you can find me your hero benjamin banks at king benji underscore banks on twitter and instagram you can find me on facebook at benjamin banks i should be the first person to pop up if not then i need to contact mr zuckerberg thank you everybody for watching our interview make sure that you check out some more of our interviews that we have here on the channel along with reaction videos and reviews. Make sure you check out our podcast where we have brand new episodes every Tuesday. And then that episode is up here on YouTube on Friday. Like I say every time, keep that pinky up, stay positive, and have a safe holiday season. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel podcast we got that too make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications thanks a lot to our patrons and if you don't mind join the patreon we'll be having new specials coming up soon